Would you rather trade volatility 75 index or volatility 51s index? Let's find out in this video. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. What is going on superstars? It's Sam Keys here again. Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to show you how to get started with Volatility 51S Index. And also, I want to share with you my favorite derived killer strategy so you can start making profits even as a beginner. And also, I'm going to show you the difference between this asset and volatility 7 to 5 index so if you want to get the best from this video i recommend that you watch this video to the very end and then you pay a close attention to every detail before we get started i want to say a huge thank you to those of you who hit the like button and also those who comment on every of my videos it really supports us to reach out to new people and that is what we really want to do to reach out to new people and equip them with the right information that is required for them to leverage in the financial markets profitably so if you're new to my channel go on and smash the subscribe button and also turn on the notification bells also let me know in the comments below your name and where you're watching this video from with all that done let's get started with this tutorial if you are a beginner trader and you're looking out to make massive profits trading volatility 51s it's important that you pay very close attention to the information that I will share on this video. Now, take a look at this. The first thing you want to do whenever you start trading is to look at price on the higher time frame. This is what I do so that I get to identify the trend of the market. When you have a clear view of the market and you have identified the trend of the market, it makes work really easy for you. And one, when you want to keep to the rules of trading, which is to buy, uh, buy the uptrends, buy the lows of an uptrend and sell the highs of a downtrend, you know, it's going to give you a higher leverage to maximize your profit. And for you to do this, you got to look at price on the higher time frame. We have the H4 and also the D1, right? The, the D1, which is the daily time frame. It helps us to have a view of the direction of the market for that particular day. After you do this, the next thing you want to do is to go into the smaller time frames, just like the one hour time frame, 15 minutes time frame, and also identify the trend within that same trend. Okay, within that same trend, we can see the big trend and now we can see a smaller trend within it. So let's go in there and just put up this, just put up the trend line, right? And also identify the bottom there. You can see, if we put this together, we're going to see that price is trying to create some kind of structure which appears to be like a triangle, right? It's trying to create a triangle. Now, this helps us to understand the structure that we see in the market. And right now, we'll be expecting a breakout of this triangle. Let me get an arrow tool. We'll be expecting a breakout of this triangle. This is the primary thing you want to do before bringing any indicator, right? Before bringing any indicator to get your entry points and all that, right? What the indicators do for us is just to know if price is going to reverse at a support or resistance line or price is going to break that level. And I'm going to show you how you apply that, making use of my derived killer strategy. Now, if you take a closer look at this market, you're going to see that around here we have a resistance and this resistance turned around to become a support here. Let me delete this. Let me delete that and bring in a horizontal line. Look at this. Introducing the horizontal line here, we have this. So I'm going to show you um, something really simple, which is the derived killer strategy. I'm going to bring in the set of indicators that I make use of for that strategy. And I'm going to show you how we can apply that on volatility 51S. And after that, I'm going to show you the difference between volatility 51S and also volatility 75. And I'm going to give you my opinion about which of these assets you should really trade when growing a small account. As you can see on my chart, I have about four indicator windows which make up the derived killer strategy, right? Uh, but on this um, video, we are going to be making use of 
the third indicator window which is the cci because it is not relevant for trading volatility 51 s index all right so before that before taking it off i'm just going to show you the settings of every of these indicators and if you're a beginner i'm just going to guide you on how to go about putting up these indicators so let's take off this chart all right, we've brought in a new chart which has no indicator in it. I'm going to show you how to do every of those primary activities. So we're going to click on the indications, right? The indicators, we click on it and we add the first one, which is the RSI. So we're going to look out for relative strength index and we have period 14 applied to close three pixel. And um, let's give this a black, right? we're done and we'll come to the levels and show you set the levels you edit the levels to 90 and 10 respectively then you go back and then you click on done you could actually edit this to you know give it a two pixel you may be seeing one pixel here you edit it to become two pixels and then you go back and you click on done so we have the first indicator window take note of the levels the 90 level shows us that price has got to the overbought zone let me show you this the 90 level you see here shows us that price has gotten to the overbought and the 10 level shows us that price has gotten to the oversold zone. So the next indicator that I want to add up here is the set of moving averages. But this set of moving averages, we need to add it on the RSI as a window too. So let's do that indicator and then we'll click on the main chart. And then we'll scroll downwards and we'll look for the RSI again. This time we're going to make the period period one done. Okay. And we'll click on done. You can see period one. There is no um, moving, moving average inside of it. It's just plain. So what we'll do is to add up the moving averages inside of it right now. So we're going to go over. Um, we're going to chart the indicator we're going to add on this indicator window too this time we're not clicking on the main chart right this time we ain't clicking on the main chart we're clicking on the indicator window too the right side here we're going to add on it we're going to add and we're going to add the moving average let's go i hope i've not missed that right we're going for the moving average scroll down or up to moving average here we go all right the first moving average here we already have the 50 Okay, let's just apply it this way because we need 50, 2, 3, and um, 5. So we're done with this. The 50 is on the chart now. So we'll go back and we add up the next moving average, which is um, the moving average 5. Right, we need moving average 5. Okay, then we'll come set the, the settings for that. We'll give it a black and we'll click on done. Then we add up another moving average right we'll scroll downwards and um let's see indicator window two we're gonna add moving average three um let's go all right the moving average three um look at it here we have three then we'll go back and this time we're giving them the color gold or something about brown good so we're done then we add the final one moving average two so we'll go to indicators and on the indicator window, we add moving average two, right? Period two. So we're gonna put two here, and then we give this color a green, something in the green family. So we have that. All right, the small moving averages are those with smaller periods. The, the large one is the 50 moving average. Now we are almost done. Now I wanna introduce the final indicator which we're using for the strategy, okay? So we're gonna introduce the moving average convergence and divergence indicator that is the macd so we're going to click on the indicator and we're going to add to the main chart this time because we want to bring in a new indicator window so we're not going to be adding it to the indicator window too we're going to add it to the main chart good then we'll scroll down to look at for macd now you leave the settings that way the fast ema should be 12 the slow ema should be 26 that is 26 the mscd sma should be 5 and then you scroll down we have one pixel and three pixels still blue and red respectively so you click on done and after that is done you're all set now you have your chart you have the <laughs> you have the weapon on your chart 
the weapon that's going to give you a lot of money, right? Now that we have this, the next thing we want to see is how do we make use of this? How, what is the strategy behind this? Right? What's the strategy that's going to give us a lot of profit with this? So we're going to go over to learn how to make use of these indicators and also how to apply price action with these indicators. Listen, guys, I'm a price action trader. I don't just trade with indicators. I apply price action. Then the few indicators that I introduce on my chart, I use it to increase my confirmation. And that is exactly what I want you to do. If you really want to become a profitable trader, you just follow the steps that I'm going to show you on this video. Now let's see the conditions for making use of this strategy. Now, everything we have on the chart is simple. The moving averages in the indicator window two what they do is to help us identify when price has gotten to an overbought zone or an oversold zone. Over the one hour time frame, you can see the prices at the top and all of the moving averages have converged at the top, right? They have converged right there. So it has given us an indication now that price is looking out to sell. Price is looking out to sell right here. But now you need to confirm is that zone a resistance zone? Is that zone a supply zone? You can confirm that by making use of price action. So I'm going to look at this on a four hour time frame so I can have um, a clearer view, right? So I can have a wider view. So let's bring in the resistance we had in time past. Can you see? In time past, we had a resistance around the zone. I'm going to get an arrow too so I can use it to point. So you, we have a resistance here and at the same point, we had the same thing happening. And it's exactly at the same point that price confirmed to us on the one hour time frame. Look at this. We are trading this with a one hour time frame. We're doing the analysis first on the one hour time frame. It confirmed to us that price is now at the overbought zone. We had the small moving averages converging at this point. We have them converging at this point. Now, this is the first entry point to really take the trade for a sell. When price is at an overbought zone, you're looking for opportunity to sell. When it is at the oversold zone, that is the 10 level, right? The 10 level is oversold, the 90 level is overbought. When it is there, you're looking for opportunity to buy. Because when you buy there, price is definitely going to go up. Now, how does, how does trading really work? Why You got to ask, um, what is it? What is it that... What is it? Why is the price gets to this bottom and the next thing you should go up and all that? It's all about supply and demand. The, the way this market is actually programmed to operate is to obey the law of supply and demand. When we have a lot of people buying at the bottom, right, the price will be going up. They say the higher the demand, the, the higher the price, right? We had more demand at this level and price started going up. When we have a lot of supply, a lot of people selling, right? We have price falling and that is how it works. So you're just going to identify in the market, when are other people going to sell and where are other people going to buy? When are the buyers coming in? When are the sellers coming in? And that is why you use this technical analysis and price action to get every of these points. So now one thing that I want to do next is to identify, I know we did that earlier on this video, identify the trend of the market. And the next thing is identify the support and resistance zone, just like I have done already, right? Just like I have done already, we saw the resistance up here and it gave us some confirmation that there was going to be a sell, right? It gave us a confirmation that there was going to be a sell, but that confirmation didn't come in on the four hour time frame. As you can see, the four hour time frame has not gotten to that level. That's why we're sticking with what the one hour time frame. We got the confirmation there's going to be a sell. All right, but this is not enough. <laughs> this is not enough. I'm going to show you my entry techniques using these indicators. I'm going to show you that right away. To get your entries when price has gotten to the oversold or the overbought zone, in this case, we're looking at the overbought zone of the moving average indicators, right? The moving average indicator where we have the indicator window too. 
to get your entry point, you're not going to be looking at price on the one hour time frame. I take my entries on the five minutes time frame and on the one minute time frame because in this time frame, price tends to give me a very close view and a huge confirmation. I see clearly now, just like the way the body operates, right? The whole body system has some unit, um, unit components, which is the cells. The cells make up the entire size of the whole body. So whatever is going on in the cellular structure affects the entire body. So the cellular structure of this market is on the five minute time frame and also the one minute time frame. That gives us the cellular structure. And that is what really works. That is what truly works. And I'm going to show you how to get your entry points making use of this strategy right now. Now, if you take a look at these indicators, let's look at indicator window one first, and let's look at indicator window three. This time we'll now go for indicator window two lastly. How the strategy works, you need to identify the trend of the market. Remember I told you that the price works with the demand and supply law. Now in this level, we had more buyers coming in at the lows. That's how trends work, right? The low trends, Look at this. We had more buyers coming at the lows and they're taking upwards. The next thing we're looking out for is when are the buyers going to get weak? When are they going to take their profits and the sellers will come in? That is why we have these indicators right here. Look at this. Price was giving us, price was giving us a higher high here. We had higher high, higher than this, and this was higher as well. But if you take a look at the ROSI window, the first one here, you will see that at this point we had a higher high. At this one we had a lower high, lower than this. You can see it still tallies. This is lower than this one. But at this last point, we have a slope. This is quite higher than this one. It was an indication. The second confirmation for this is the MACD. The MACD helps us to confirm what is going on on the ROSI. When the two of them has the same information shared, then it is a confirmation that what you're trying to put up is valid. Now, take a look at this. I'm going to bring up this arrow here. You can see at this point, we had the slope downwards. We had a slope downwards at this point over the five minutes time frame, right? We had that slope. And also on the ROSI window, we had a slight slope. The MACD just magnifies it so that we can see it more clearly. And that was the confirmation. Then let me show you the third confirmation. Remember, the first confirmation was to see uh, a slope downwards. That is called divergence. When price is giving us a higher high on the main chart and on the ROSI or the MACD, it is giving us a lower high. It is called divergence. That is the case where you are expecting price to sell. Okay, we're going to work with just selling here and I'm going to talk about when you can buy why we backtest this strategy. Now, the next thing you want to confirm to get your entry points now is take a look at the set of moving averages. That's going to help us to get the entry point. Let me magnify that so you can see it clearly. Now, look at this, guys. Look at this. Take a look at this. The point on the five minutes time frame or the one minute time frame. The zoom level for this strategy is completely out. It is completely out. If we take it in one more time, you're gonna see clearly, right? Just one zoom level, zoom level one, or the previous one, zoom level zero, you're gonna get it. The point where every of these moving averages converge at what? The 90 level. That is the over but zone of the RSI levels right on the chart that is the point where we're expecting to go in for a sell and then you put your stop loss where are you going to put your stop loss i'm going to show you you do that making use of price action now that is the first entry point the second entry point is at the point where we had the cross remember price has gotten to the overbought zone in this case it did not get to the overbought zone but there was a cross this is not what we're looking at for we're looking for a strategy that's going to give us thousands of pips 
it's going to give us thousands of pips that is what's happening with the strategy now you look at this it got to this point and the cross the point where price crossed is the second entry point okay and that is it now look at the swing let's see how many pips this particular swing has actually given us and um, we're going to maximize how do you calculate pips on this asset i'm going to show you how to do that it is where we're going to talk about the similarities and also the difference between volatility 50 index and volatility 75 index but let me just show you quickly how many pips the price go i'm going to look at this on the 30 minutes time frame or let's look at it on the one hour time frame let's look at it on the one hour time frame we're trying to identify how many pips that price has gone um, I'm just going to use the four hours so that I can have a, a larger view. Okay, look at it now. So let's bring in the course bar to take it at the top and then to the bottom at this bottom here where it had the rejection. You can see that what is written there is after the forward slash, we have 19923.10. This is equivalent to 1992 pips. And on this, I'm going to show you how to calculate pips on volatility 51S. And we're going to compare that with how to calculate pips on volatility 75 index. To calculate pips on any volatility index, all you need to do is to identify the number of digits after the decimal point on the price quote. On volatility 50 index, that's volatility 51S index, and also volatility 75 index, we can see the price has two digits, two digits after the decimal point. And by the left side of the decimal point, we have about six digits, right? Two, five, five, let's do it this way. We have about six digits to the left side. Now the PIP position for this when you're trading volatility 75 index and also when you're trading volatility 51s the p position is the second digit before the decimal point when counting from left to right right this digit before the decimal point here or remember we calculated from left to right now we're going to go from right to left because we have the decimal point here it is the fourth digit so this is one this is two this is three and this is the fourth digit so when you're trading with your laptop the laptop doesn't really give you the cross by calculating with a decimal point it doesn't show that it shows you in terms of points so these are the points there are two points here so it's the fourth when you count from right to left so this is the p position now let's go to volatility 75 to confirm what i just said on volatility 75 index take a look at this on volatility 75 index let's take a quick look at the price quote on the price quote you can see that let's just take a typical price quote you can see on the right side we have 760024.63 or 67 all right you, you can see that it's the same thing it has two digits after the decimal point so calculation of the peep is exactly the same thing for every volatility index any other one volatility 10 index and so on the peep position remember this guys always remember this the peep position is let's write this for example this is two decimal place the peep position is the second digit right here the second digit after the decimal point when counting from right to left so if you're counting this way this is the peak position all right so if price moves from let's say we have um three two one six one if it moves from there to three two let's put this one seven one then we say that price has moved how many pips put it on the chat box <laughs> price has moved let's put the last zero here price has moved 10 pips because it moves from it moved from 61 to 71 every other thing remaining the same what if price moves from this digit to this point it moves to let's put a two here and let's erase the seven here let's make the seven a six right want to confirm how many pips the price has moved if it moves from three two one six one zero to three two two six one zero then we can say the price has moved 100 pips right now 
if you take a close look at this asset, okay, let's have a close look at this asset. You're going to see that price moves very fast. I repeat, price moves very fast. It can move a hundred pips in a few seconds, in a few seconds, just like, let's go to the smaller time frame. Let's go to the one minute time frame. Okay, this is volatility, um, volatility 705 index. Take a look at the price quote. It can move hundreds. Can you see that? Can you see the move in just seconds? In seconds, it can go hundreds of pips, right? It can go a hundred pips in a few seconds. And that is it. The same thing applies on volatility 51S. Let's look at volatility 51S. This is um, the similarity between these two assets. Right. If you take a look at this, you can see it is moving in tens of pips. Every tick is in tens of pips, and in a couple of seconds, you can have a hundred pip. So you want to be careful of what loss size you're going to use to trade. And on that note, we are going to identify the lot sizes available on volatility 51 hertz, and we're going to compare it to the lot size available on volatility 75 index. What we want to do here is to identify the minimum volume or the lot size available to trade this asset. To trade volatility 51S, the minimum volume available to trade it is 0.005, right? That is 0.005. And this represents 5 cents. It represents 5 cents per pip. 5 cents per pip. On the previous chapter of this video, we talked about how to calculate pips on volatility 51S. Now for every pip movement, and we also take note, we identify that price moves tens of pips per tick, right? Every tick, it moves but um, tens of pips. And in a few seconds, within one minute, it can go 100 pips, right? So that is what we did. We identified every of these things. Now, what about, this is volatility, um, this is volatility 51S, right? 1S. What about volatility 75 index? Let's clear this. Now, on volatility 75 index, the minimum lot size available to trade it is 0 0.001. Okay, that is what we have on volatility 75 index, right? And this is equivalent to one cent per pip. Now, what about the maximum lot size, the maximum volume that you can make use of? For both of them, the maximum volume is 1.000, and that is the standard lot size, which is equivalent to $10 per pip, and that is it. So if price is going 100 pips, that's definitely going to give you $1,000 um dollars within a few seconds and that is the thing about this asset now that you know the minimum lot size is available to trade this the next thing you're going to be thinking is for my account size right which of these two um, assets should i focus on trading if you're starting with a hundred dollar account is it safe to trade volatility 51s with it now it's all about your risk management it's all about your risk management and I'm going to take you to risk management right now. All right. When we talk about risk management, we are looking at the risk to reward ratio of a particular trade setup. For example, look at this. We're talking about risk to reward ratio. How many percent of your accounts are you going to be risking to get a particular percent? Now for the risk aspect, which has to do with money management, I recommend that whenever you're trading on a particular trade setup, do not risk more than 10%. Do not risk more than 10%. Now you say 10% is huge. That means on a $10,000 account, I'll be risking $1,000, right? Or perhaps on a $100,000 account, I'll be risking $10,000. Or let's say on a $100 account, I'll be risking $10. Right. If you want to flip your account, if you want to grow a small account, the smaller the accounts, the higher the risk. That is just the thing. That's the practical truth about trading. Right. 10% for small accounts. Right. Then when you go up, you now start dropping it. Remember, I said maximum 10%. You start dropping it. If you want to go on the extreme, some people like going 20%, but I don't recommend that because trading is actually risky. So you need to take calculated risk. And if a trade doesn't go your way, you accept the loss, then you come in again. So you want to have a risk that will allow you to come in over and over again and recover the losses. It is easier to recover um, a $10 
um, $10 loss on a $100 account from $90, you get $10 back than to recover a $50. Because if you want to recover $50 on um, $50 loss on a $100 account, that's that's going to take a lot. That's about doubling the account. So you want to keep your risk tight. Okay, so that is the thing. Let's look at um, calculation of this. Let's get to identify every of this. And we're going to see what is really happening in the market. And if on volatility 51s, the minimum lot side is 0 0.005. And we'll say the risk um, should be about 10%. Let's see. This would be, let's say this would be, um, this is equivalent to 10, 5 cents, right? This is equivalent to 5 cents. And if you're taking a trade that you're going to be risking 200 pips, right? The risk is 200 pips. That means that you will be risking how much? $10. So if you're taking um, trades with volatility 51S, your risk should not be more than 200 pips on a $100 account because that is exactly 10% of that account. But if you don't want to take so much of a risk and you want to keep your risk within 2% to 5%, then volatility 51S is not the asset to trade. The asset you want to trade as a beginner is volatility 75 index. Now let's do a quick um, review on volatility 75 index. On volatility 75 index, we have the minimum lot size available. That is the minimum volume available on volatility 75 index is 0 0.001 okay since we have 0 0.001 um this is equivalent to one cent per pip so if you're taking a risk of 200 pips right if you're taking a risk of 200 pips that would be a risk of what two dollars now if your trade is going to give you 1000 pips because this derived killer strategy gives us up to 1000 pips profit right you're risking 200 pips for 1000 pips that means this risk is going to give us ten dollars profit right it's going to give us ten dollars profit with the strategy and that is the thing but if you're trading this same strategy on volatility 50 index let me clear this right if you're trading the same strategy on volatility 50 index remember that you're risking ten dollars right you're risking ten dollars with a 200 pip trade and you're making 1,000 pips, you're making $50. You're making what? $50 profit. And that is what it's going to give you. And this is just the simple truth about how to trade this asset. So you want to take a look at the strategy that I've shared with you on this video and practice it on your demo account. And also let me know in the comments how it truly really works for you. Check out the description of this video to have link to join my Telegram platform where I teach more about trading and I post useful resources and trade ideas every day. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to drop your questions in the comments below and also let me know what you'd like me to talk about in my next videos. Thank you for watching. My name is Sam Keys and I'm always here to help. Peace out. Nothing can stop me. I'm all the way up. Oh.